I'm going to take you through a training session that I did at Lowe's with Fen not too long ago, specifically working on relaxing around distractions, not necessarily focusing around distractions, staying in a perfect heel, offering the eye contact. I've talked about that in some other videos and how you can work your way towards that. This is actually the step that you take before you ask for all of that. This is how we get a dog that can actually see a distraction and know how to actually handle themselves without too much input from you. If you haven't seen my last video talking all about Fen's success at the winery, that is a huge outcome of this type of training that I'm doing with him taking him different places with me and actually teaching him to relax in that environment. All the obedient stuff is great and that will come later, but if I actually work on teaching my dog to relax in the presence of distractions and they can actually generalize that concept to any context that I take them into, that's how you're gonna get a dog that's gonna be able to walk right into a situation, know how to behave, instantly relax and calm down and offer you immediate focus so then you can focus on obedience, tricks, anything else that that you want of them in that specific environment. If your dog is doing this for the very first time, I would not start at a place like Lowe's or Home Depot. Start in your front yard. This is something that I did with Fen whenever he was younger, practicing watching distractions calmly. We set up out in front of our yard and then at the local park, different local park, and then we extrapolated from there. So if this is your first time doing this with your dog, make it easier for them and set them up in a context that we're likely going to have them succeed because they're already comfortable there. Then you can start to kind of venture out to these different locations. You'll notice in this video that I didn't actually take Fen inside the building at all. We stayed outside. I really want to make sure that he's completely comfortable outside before I even attempt to bring him inside because inside is not going to be any better than outside. Outside is actually going to be a whole lot easier. So if we don't have that mastered, there's no way I'm taking him inside and expecting him to be able to master that situation as well. He has been inside many times, but it has been a while since we've done this. So practicing with him outside first was just a nice baby step introduction back into higher level distraction training when we haven't done it in a really long time. I'd recommend doing the same thing with your dogs at home. So similar to the winery and what we talked about in my previous video, prior to actually taking Fen into this situation, I exercised him. He got some ball time at home, some good running fetch exercise. Um, and then prior to this little training session I'm doing with him right now, I walked him around for a good 15-ish minutes. Let him sniff, explore. I didn't really ask much of him. That's kind of the lead up that you guys saw in the background of me talking in the first part of this video is me just walking him around giving our dogs a chance to explore and actually check the environment out that we're asking them to be a part of, I think is really important. So here I took him around to the side of the building to get a gauge on how he was feeling. Um, I am asking for tricks in this context, tricks that I know that Fen is able to follow through with if he's comfortable in a situation. And particularly on the side of the building here, there were no people, there were no other cars, dogs, like no real distractions going on over here so it was a good lower intensity place to start and for me to actually gauge his comfort level and he was looking completely comfortable over here he was able to take food he's able to do all of the tricks that I asked of him he even gets a little goofy and silly with me at moments that tells me that he's very comfortable now in between these little mini sit down training sessions or observing sessions I'm giving Fen breaks to go sniff in between <laughs> there he's gonna offer his cute little one-up trick um, but I think that breaking something like this up for our dogs a little bit on a a little bit off. So here I cut most of this out, but we left this section. I let him go sniff again. Make sure that he gets some sniffs in. The sniffing is really important in particular in a situation like this because sniffing lowers our dog's heart rates. So it's actually a great way to decompress your dog if they know how to sniff, they know how to take information in via their nose. It's a great opportunity to encourage your dog to lower their heart rate and kind of calm down. Now this next spot was just around the corner. So now we can see cars going by, we can see people going by, and we actually encounter there's a man that's approaching 
approaching. Um, it was a worker and he was just actually conversating with us. He didn't actually come over and say hi to Fen, which was kind of a good opportunity. Fen really wanted to say hi. This is a context that we've worked really hard on with Fen. It used to be a scary situation to him. Not so much anymore. He's actually pretty excited about saying hi to people. So this was a good practice opportunity to say, yep, this guy's not actually going to say hello to you. He's just going to casually talk to you from a distance but not come over and pet you. So I was really impressed though with how Fen was able to calm himself back down immediately after this man left. That's more of what I'm looking for at this point and during this training session with him is how quickly can you calm yourself back down from something exciting like that happening. And he was able to re-engage with me, calm himself down into actually like fully lying down here in a second, which is great to see. If your dog is struggling to calm themselves down from a situation like that, I would recommend adding some food into the picture, target their nose with a treat, redirect back onto you. However, this is something I've worked really hard on with Fen, so I knew he could do it himself. So I waited until he was actually fully calmed down in order to then offer him food again. That was just a personal preference for Fen, but you definitely could help your dogs out by adding food into the picture early on. Now, this next situation that is about to happen is a, wom a woman is going to approach and want to say hello to Fen. And Fen, it actually kind of startles him a little bit. He's going to actually get to say hi to this person. Um, again, this is something that I we've worked really hard on and Fen's excited about meeting people. We are now working on some manners with meeting people. So the um, nice worker had a treat for him that she kindly tossed and then as soon as she started petting him is when he jumped up, which is exactly what we're trying to work on. I didn't care about it much in this context. She clearly didn't mind him jumping up and it's not the purpose of why we're here. Different day, different training session, we'll work on that. But again, I get that turnaround right away from him. He calmed down as soon as she walked away. That is perfect. That's kind of what I'm looking for from him in this context. And that was fun for him. He had a good time saying hi to that person. Now, because those two situations just happened and that was very exciting, I'm again going to provide him with a sniffy break. Something exciting happens. Let's go sniff. Let's decompress. He's also doing really well at this point, so I'm adding a little bit more basic obedience in with maybe asking him to sit before we cross the parking lot like he just did right there, asking him for tricks, that kind of stuff, and then I'm encouraging him to sniff. Something exciting happened, you just watched exciting people going by, that one person said hi to you, great, let's go sniff. Bring your heart rate back down again. And I'm also evaluating throughout these sniffy breaks too, how are we feeling? Are we feeling like we're a little bit overwhelmed? Should we stop the training session? Fen looked completely relaxed to me after sniffing. His He was happy, his tail was up. He wanted to continue to sniff, explore. He was able to follow through with different behaviors I was asking of him. So great, we're gonna move forwards. If at any point though, your dog is showing you that they are uncomfortable in a situation, you're gonna wanna take them a little farther away or completely out of the session and stop your training session, whatever it is that you're working on, see how to help them. But Fen was showing me here, I'm completely comfortable. So here we are placed in front of the store, just off to the side. More people action, okay? And all we're going for here is just Fen practicing watching people go by calmly. Previously, people came up to him and were talking to him and the worker said hello to him. So now I've kind of positioned myself in a way that um, none of the people, they'd have to approach us from really far away and very determinedly in order to run into us. Nobody was actually walking right in front of us. So I did that strategically so that most of the people passing by were not actually going to talk to Fen or say hi to him, which was perfect. So in this context, I'm working on teaching Fen to really be neutral in this situation. I'm tossing some treats on the ground if he wants them to help him kind of disengage. But again, he was pretty relaxed and happy and wagged his tail a few times at some people going by that he made eye contact with. But this was a good opportunity basically to teach him that in most cases, you're just going to be neutral whenever other people are going by. I'm getting good engagement from him. It's all good. So as long as your dogs are looking calm in this situation, it's a great situation to keep them in. Again, using food to reinforce your dogs for watching things calmly. That is not as much shown in this video because I've done a lot of work with that with Fen and he knows that that is kind of what we're going for here. But when your dog notices people, 
reward them. Reward them with a treat or with a ball tossed for looking at things calmly. Fen's at the stage now where I, I'm letting him just continue to look because he's doing so in a really calm manner. And again, we got a little sniffy break. Here we ended up um, moving away from the front and this was our last spot. I let him sit and lie down and we observed uh, more of the parking lot scene before we um, headed out. So I'm gonna switch to just this video so you guys can see. So I'm kind of letting Fen just watch everything. Um, we were just at the winery the other day and he did excellent with just watching everything calmly. So I'm kind of letting him do that exact same thing here. And he's just observing all the people. He's taking food and he's in his really sloppy, relaxed sit. So I know he's not over threshold, but we're just watching things calmly. Good boy. Nice job. And I'm kind of just letting him do that. Um, I didn't take him inside because um, that would have been, it would have been too much. It's a little bit busier here now and um, where he was at, it was, that's, it's a lot to take in. But we sat right out front. Good boy. Now he's going to lie down in the grass and just chill. There's a lot going on in the parking lot. Um, but this is kind of part of what I'm working on with him is I don't necessarily need him to do something specific. Just watch his surroundings calmly it's kind of what we're working on so that's what we're doing right here We spent maybe 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes um, just hanging out at Lowe's and now I'm balancing that with letting Fen get a little freedom, run around in the soccer field. Um, I think balance is really important there. I didn't ask too much of him while we were at Lowe's, just being there was a lot. And it's been a minute since he's done that, but like I said there, we're working on him being calm and watching things calmly and non-reactively in an environment like that. So I kind of just let him watch a lot today. Um, I asked for a few things. Go play! Yeah, the buddy! Hi! That's a rookie boy. Oh, hold on. You're all stuck. Okay, there you go. Um, and now I'm balancing that with him getting a little freedom, running around, um, which in turn, yeah, a boy, <laughs> good boy. Usually when I do this, I get a lot more engagement from him, um, which is just what I want. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're in an already really distracting environment for your dogs, not putting too much pressure on them having to pay full attention to you. Go boy! Go boy! And then not staying in that situation for an extended long period of time where you're kind of just going to set you and your dog up to fail that way I think is really important. And then balancing that with giving them a little freedom, whether it's like this or a super long line on your dog or 
a sniff spot, something like that. So this is Fen's exercise and training for today, even though I wasn't working on a really specific behavior, just being in the environment is good. So that's what we're doing.